Suppose you found yourself abandoned in the middle of the desert. Your phone is damaged, and all you have is the sand surrounding you. What would you do first? A. Attempt to find your way back to civilization. B. Locate a source of water so that you don't get dehydrated. Or C. Find the square root of 17, just for the lulls. If you chose C, this video is for you. There are three methods in this video that I'll be explaining. Those being summation, finding a differential, and doing longhand square roots. To start, let's take a look at summation. While not really a method of computing square roots directly, this algorithm offers an easier way to find squares by hand than multiplication. You can then use these squares with the guess and check method to get a basic approximation. The process used is to add up a series of numbers that can be defined as a of n equals 2m plus 1 from 0 to 1 less than the number you want to square. This works because if you were to visualize the multiplication performed by squaring a number compared to the number in the series before it, you would see two sides, with the length of n, having one unit added to them, and one unit added into the corner, which simplifies to 2n plus 1. Algebraically, this can also be seen as multiplying n plus 1 squared to find the next square after n squared. The difference between the expression and n is 2n plus 1. This method is not always terribly useful to humans, since we know the earlier squares in the series making the addition pointless, and the larger squares we don't know would be faster to evaluate with multiplication. Computers, however, in some cases may calculate a series of squares faster in this method, if they cannot perform multiplication as quickly as they can addition. The same problem occurs, however, that unless the entire series of squares is necessary, a lot of time is wasted calculating the smaller ones. Additionally, while this method can calculate the squares of numbers quickly, it still leaves the actual calculation of square roots to approximation, which leads me to the next method. This next method involves some basic calculus, but can give you much more accurate results faster than the previous guess and check method. The idea, put simply, is to draw as many lines tangent to the curve of a square root function as possible. Since the lines get closer to the graph of the function until the line and the function intersect, you can use the close areas between the lines to get a quick and reasonably accurate estimate of what the square root would be at that point. To do this, you need to draw the tangent lines, and to draw the tangent lines, you need to know the slope of the curve at the point the line intersects. To do that, we use the derivative of the function. A derivative, simply put, is a function made from the function we are graphing that tells us the slope at almost any point on the graph. In this case, the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over the value of 2 times the square root of x. To estimate the square root of a number, we first find, much like the guess and check method, what square integer the number is closest to. For this example, 17 would be closest to 16. Let's take a closer look at that section of the graph. Since we chose the point 164, we need to find the slope of the function at 16. If we put 16 into the derivative function, we get the slope 1 8 out, which means that at that point on the graph, for every 8 units the x increases, the y value will increase by 1. Since 17 is 1 away from 16, we multiply 1 by the slope to determine that the square root of 17 is about 1 8 greater than the square root of 16, which is 4. Add the 1 8 to the 4 and you get 4.125, which is pretty close to the actual value of the square root of 17, 4.123. The final method is the most accurate, seeing that much like long division, you get another decimal placed to your answer with every time that you repeat the steps. The downside, however, is that it typically takes much longer than the previous methods and the calculations can become rather unruly after a few steps. You start by writing your number under the radical. Going away from the decimal point, group the digits into twos. Each group of two digits you put in will give you another digit of precision in the answer. To start, take the first group and find the largest square that can be subtracted from it while still getting a positive answer. In this case it's 4. The root of the square goes above the group and the square gets subtracted from the first group. Next, take down the next group to the result from the subtraction. Now comes the hard part. Taking the answer currently above the radical, double the answer and put an underline to the right of the number. You want to find the number that, when put in the blank and multiplied by the resultant number, is the greatest possible value less than the number to the right. In this case, the answer would be 1. Put the answer over the next group on top of the radical and subtract the number from the multiplication from the number to the right. Bring down the next group and repeat until you subtract to a 0, signifying that all digits that follow will be zeros or you get your desired precision on top. 
What's going on here? It's best if it's explained visually. Assume we have a square that has the area of the number under the radical, and naturally, the sides are equal to the number we're getting on top. When you guess the first number, you're actually segmenting the space inside the square, marking one section, which represents the area of your first digit squared. The process to determine the next digit can be seen as dividing more of the area into two equal rectangles in a square. If you were to look at what you've done algebraically, you've taken the number from the top, we'll call it A, and made two rectangles out of it, with the other side being represented by B. After adding in B and multiplying the whole expression by B, you're left with 2AB, shown by the rectangles, and B squared, shown by the square. Every time this step is repeated, the area you section off in the square gets smaller, and the total area gets closer to the number under the radical. Since the area is always divided into squares, the lengths of the sides accumulating on top of the radical get closer to the square root, as the area gets closer to that of the square. While that last method can be confusing in execution, it is the fastest way to get a precise answer, although speed may not be your priority as you spend your last few hours in the middle of nowhere doing math. Regardless, in the event you find yourself in a similar situation, you can now enjoy the fact that you learned how to evaluate square roots without a calculator.